Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's stories, which will be timestamped down below in the description for your convenience. So first off, I do want to touch on a big story out there, a big doozy of a story involving Homeland Security. So for all of you guys, first off, who don't know the Department of Homeland Security, these are guys and gals who work for this organization you do not want to mess with. Don't get on the wrong side of a Homeland Security agent because they can find out just about anything about you they want to, you know, where your dogs are from, where your parents are from, where you go to school, your home address, your phone numbers, whatever is actually you know, technically public information and beyond that, even private information. These guys know how to actually access that kind of stuff. So do never get on the wrong side of an actual Homeland Security agent like this guy did, Sean Knapp, on screen for all of you guys, actually the owner of a small esports organization out there known as Excel GG. Now they actually had their Twitter hacked by a Homeland Security agent just this past weekend. That Twitter was formally deleted and Sean Knapp went ahead and relaunched a new Twitter for his esports organization, a smaller esports organization who runs leagues out there. They had a few teams every now and again. Again, nothing exactly huge, but one thing he actually did wrong was Sean Knapp. I'll reshow his picture on screen for all of you. Is he messed with the wrong people? Apparently, he was running a few fake giveaways out there, also scamming investors. He would draw in investors for Excel GG, you know, obviously promising returns to those investors. He would take those investors' money in, obviously, and apparently the Homeland Security agent was one of those investors. He would take their money in, promise returns, and never pay them out, and just keep the money for his own personal gain. And he messed with the wrong person as the Homeland Security agent actually took over the Twitter. Twitter account he was posting things like this Sean's personal information as well as public information but still obviously Sean probably not wanting his phone number out there his home address where his parents are from he was tweeting out several things uh, the Homeland Security agent was on his Twitter until eventually the Twitter was actually deleted so overall kind of just a really serious situation as well so for the Homeland Security agent out there who did hack Sean please when if you want to reach out to me for your side of the story to get the full story and why you actually did this please don't hack me but I'd love to hear the full story as well as to Sean if you're watching this I will be reaching out to Sean as well to get more more details for all of you guys in the future of the story. It does seem as of right now, Sean is in the wrong and had several accusations besides the guy who hacked him that he did some things that were very wrong and immoral, which costed some people, you know, obviously the wrong people a lot of money. So unfortunately enough, Excel GG lost a lot of their following on Twitter. But yeah, they were hacked by a Homeland Security agent. Who would have guessed that? But also, even more importantly, I hinted at this in my last episode, guys, it seems almost imminent now that Phantom Lord is returning to CSGO. Now, first off, before you guys laugh at me, <laughs> Jake, like why is why would Phantom Lord ever come back? It has now been just over one year, a couple days ago, actually I think it was yesterday, the one year anniversary to the date that he was caught scamming the community. Obviously, I told you guys before, making millions off that with the CSGO Shuffle and other websites out there, the scam being between him and Dingle Derper, his close girlfriend. They've ever since broken up, but Phantom Lord has been updating his Facebook profile picture. He cleared up all of his Twitter feed. He only has one tweet on screen for all of you, and he's also been posting things like this on his Snapchat as well as on his Facebook and Twitter. It says, one year truth. So the, the main, obviously, the rumor right now is that it's been one year and he's going to be coming out sometime soon, coming back to maybe try and apologize to the community and say, you know, why, what actually happened, what actually went down, and the actual truth behind the situation. So for all you Phantom Lord fans out there who are feeling forgiving, well, if you guys can forgive Syndicate and you can forgive uh, Mr. Martin, I'm sure you can forgive Phantom Lord too. I myself, Probably not going to, but I'm very curious to see what he comes out with in the next few weeks. Now, also on top of this, I do want to talk about some laying off in the scene. Now, I want to talk about this because Richard Lewis did mention this alongside Decay, who actually posted the original story about ESL laying off employees. As of you know, the first post, it was Decay who first said around 20 people were laid off under ESL's TV and production crew, which does make sense. We've heard this before from other pro players out there. Production costs for these organizers can be very expensive, and it's not very profitable unless you run a good event and you know, unless you do your your job correctly. So ESL laying off people, I really don't mind this too much, but Richard Lewis has corrected this. He said now it's upward of 30 employees ESL has laid off. And my own personal opinion right now says it's probably for the better. You know, they have their own statement on screen for all of you. They're trying to better their production for the future. So for anyone worried about ESL laying off people saying, oh, if ESL does it, maybe Starlet or DreamHack. And a quick intermission story. Again, thank you to everyone who's been using my OP Skins affiliate code down below in the description. I cannot thank you guys enough. We actually broke 550 users ever since last video. And that is insane to think about. So I seriously appreciate each and every one of you, especially those out there who actually use my OP Skins affiliate code and comment down below. Uh, seriously, thank you guys so much for that. Now also I want to talk about some Immortal sound issues during the major, major qualifier. Not the sound issues you might think Immortals might be having. We actually had Bolts tweet out this, allegedly saying in a crucial match moment versus Godsent, this would be their second win of the major qualifier. They were actually told to be quiet, to stop yelling and shouting. Now although Richard Lewis made a good point, there was in the rule books obviously a rule you cannot curse 
curse or shout at your opponents, although in some situations that rule needs to be bent because you can never really tell whether they're shouting at them, you know, just in general at the crowd of themselves or at the opponents, especially when an opponent is horizontal to you. It's very hard to say that these guys, I didn't see any clips of them cursing or shouting at the opponent. Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe they were getting a bit raunchy, but from what I saw in the next match, their third and final win to secure themselves a major spot, Immortals had one of the most emotional round wins and actual match wins against HR that I have ever seen. So I'm going to play that clip for you guys and tell me this is not rile you up. Tell me this is not make you emotional and this is one of the most insane things. I love this emotion, guys. in general I do agree that if you're cursing or shouting directly at your opponents like you know in most Call of Duty events they had the two teams set up right facing each other and that could be much more of an instance where that rule does come into play but for CSGO and especially this tournament the teams were not even close to each other horizontal uh, you know there were there, there's no clip that I saw that Immortals players were literally standing above their chairs and, and yelling over the other teams but I could be wrong so if you guys have any clips of that please share but Immortals Emotion I did like that and that was really cool to see now bouncing off this as well and some short stories guys we've guarded Guardian CSGO, the man from Navi himself, Guardian getting married this past weekend. That was so cool to see. The guy looks really good in a tux. I'll show you guys a picture of that if I haven't already. Now on top of that, even more importantly though, we had Refresh Entertainment. If you guys don't know who Refresh is, well they actually just raised over 7 million euros, uh, over over 8 million dollars USD to actually start hosting their own esports events. Probably going to be just directly in CSGO. Refresh Entertainment is actually the company who does commercial management and media management for teams like Astralis, Heroic, Godsent, and they make quite a bit of money and they're actually fairly tied to Astralis mainly. So obviously some pretty good teams there they have under their belt just like we have ES Force working with Virtus Pro and SK and Navi. These guys are kind of like uh, the other side of that. Refresh works with your top Danish teams. So it's going to be cool to see what they do with that 7, 7 million euros. Obviously we have oversaturation already being a problem so hopefully Refresh isn't going to go out there and start their own series. You know the Refresh series like DreamHack does but hopefully one or two tournaments from Refresh will be cool to see. And very last in today's episode of CSK News I'm going to share this very quickly with with all of you because we are running out of time. I don't want this video to be too long. So first off, I do want to show you guys the eight teams who did actually manage to qualify out of our major qualifier and join our other eight teams to make our 16 teams for, of course, the PGL major coming up in just less than two weeks or right around two weeks time, guys. So here are the eight teams on screen who did qualify. The surprises that I love to see, especially sticker-wise. It's going to be really cool to see what the PGL stickers are going to look like. We have Vega Squadron, Big and Penta looking really good. Penta looking dominant, especially in the early half of things, starting off 2-0. But Big came back as well. And those are the two years German teams out there that I really was kind of surprised that they both qualified. Great to see them. Alongside Flipside, who dominated early on, and they actually finished off Liquid in their last match. I think that match actually went to triple overtime or so, and that's why I tweeted out this. Never bet on North America. It's great to see Flipside earn their way in there, but North American squads have to be very angry because for the first time in a long time, we actually have, well, I guess the first time probably ever, we have more Brazilian squads and Brazilian teams than North American teams. We have Cloud9, and then that's, that's it for North America, and then alongside them, we have SK of course and then Immortals who also managed to qualify. I showed you guys their clip last. More Brazilian teams than American teams. Kind of a disappointment there for Liquid to get so close. Optic Gaming coming nowhere near close. One of the 0-3 teams there who just looked very disappointing to see them. And also Immortals and Vega Squadron. Congrats to them for all you Brazilian fans and Vega Squadron fans out there. Not only another CIS team with Vega Squadron but those are two of the teams who actually back in December for the E-League Major just barely missed out. They both went 2-3 and three, losing their last matches. So huge congrats to those teams who managed to qualify and it's going to be a great major, guys. I cannot wait to see what competition lies there. As always, hope you guys all enjoy this episode of CSGO News. My name is Jake. I will see you guys all tomorrow with one last episode this week of CSGO News before I go off to New York and actually have to do, uh, you know, family things. So, hope you guys all enjoy it. Please leave a comment down below so I can interact with all of you guys. Live, love, laugh a lot. Yeah, tomorrow. Goodbye.